All right, shalom and welcome. Glad you joined us today. Today we're going to go over there is a time to heal. There's a time for everything. We see in the scriptures very clearly of what it tells us. There's a time to do. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time for everything in life. So the real question is what part of this are you in? Where are you at in this place called life? It's all really a journey. It's all really, if you will, a testing to learn and to gain wisdom and to grow closer to the creator Yahweh. If we do anything different than that, it's really not what the scriptures, it's really not a biblical stance. All through the scriptures, we see Adam made well, Adam and Eve was made, right? Yahweh made Adam. So he made him in his image. Make sense? So the thing that we have to understand, he made him perfect and not a dying creature, not a dying human being. Sin made them die. And surely in the day that you do this, you shall die, right? He kept his word because according to Yahweh, one day is a thousand years. As far as we know, nobody ever lived past a thousand, right? Methuselah was the longest living man, and he still never lived past a thousand. Now, there's also a way out. People say, well, we have to do this, and we have to do that, and we have to all these things. But we see that Enoch, Elijah, we see that Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. So the, the whole point that I'm trying to make here is we have to live circumspectly. We have to live sin free. We need to live Torah life. That's right. That Torah that everybody wants to throw away is called the instructions. Without the instructions, and it's amazing, we can be 20, 30, 40, 50 years old and not ever read the Torah, not ever read these instructions. And they're really, really easy. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not commit adultery, right? So a lot of these things that it is something that we need to do and not do. Pretty simple things. But the problem is we want to have a life where we don't like this. We don't want that. And therefore, that's what we come into, right? We come into what we want to do and how we want to live it. And we use sometimes excuses, but some people are just straight not there, right? Some people are just not there, and that's understandable, as we kind of all are at certain times. We just don't know. We just haven't been taught. But if you look in almost every motel room, there is a thing called the Bible in the drawer. So there's no real excuse for not knowing and saying and doing what so saith Yahweh, because when we don't do what so saith Yahweh, guess what happens? That's right. We get in trouble and we get into things that get us into trouble and we don't do the things that we should do. Make sense? So let's go on. Let's see what the scripture tells us clearly. There's a time to live. There's a time to die. There's a time to throw stones. There's a time to pick up stones. There's a time to heal. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to cry. All these things we know happen and we see them. The scriptures is very, very clear of what this life has to offer us, right? It's very, very clear of what we have to see. The problem is, in many cases, we don't want to believe that. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to be a part of that, right? We want to say, oh, you know, I... I know it's just bad luck, or I know it's just this, or I know it's just that, but really, it's a part of life. And the more, what I would submit to you, the more that we come across life, meaning the older we get, the more we're going to run into these things. 
Now, how do we stop this? How do we keep evil things from happening? Well, there's only so much we can do, right? We can't sit here and act like if we live this way, then we're never, ever going to run into problems. We're never, ever going to have problems. Because we know if we do that, that's kind of what Church Andy tells us, right? <clears throat> I raise my hand, I'm saved, and when something comes along, it's devastating. And people even lose their religion because of such things. They go and they won't listen to other people because of such things, right? Makes perfect sense. Why would I listen to something because I went to church the pastor told me I'm saved, I'm not going to get sick. And then, you know, your wife or kid or daughter or somebody gets sick. And what, what gives? I'm living right. I'm living the right way. I'm doing the right thing. So what is the problem? And with a lot of this, you know, people fall out of church, churchianity, right? Because of these very things. Because they don't know the Torah, they don't know the scriptures, they don't live by the scriptures. So if you don't live by the scriptures, then of course, what's going to happen to you? You're going to die by the scriptures. You're going to be judged whether you like it or not, right? Every knee is going to bow. Everyone's going to come before the creator and they're going to have the answer for everything they did in their life, everything that they went and sinned. So... There's this man called Yeshua, if we can call him that, right? There's this one called Yeshua. Some people call him Jesus, but his true name is Yeshua. And he came that we could have life and more abundant life. He came that we could live and have a eternal life. So let's read what the scriptures tells us. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. There's a purpose for everything, and there's a reap what you sow, right? People eat things, they live their life, they do things, and they don't understand if you plant this seed, it, it's going to grow. And in this thing called life, don't matter if it's an evil seed or a good seed. It really, you know, it doesn't really matter. You plant it, that's what's going to happen, right? You pick up your little cup and you put your soul in it and you plant your seed. And if it's a good seed, that's what's going to flourish and grow. Your children with all your life, with all this. But what we neglect to understand, the scriptures also tells us not to have pagan wives and husbands, not to go and have these other things. So a lot of times we see divorce rates, we see things going crazy because people planted their seed with the wrong ones. Catholics, Baptists, Pentecost, whatever they may be, and they thought it might be all right, but they realized even within that nature, I'm a Catholic, you're a Baptist. We're going to raise our children this way. No, we're not. And so what is going to happen? It, we're, we're ripping our tree trunk, we're ripping our seed in two. Our little baby plant is now this big and we're going to rip it in half. And of course it's going to die. And therefore we have divorce. We have children that, I'm a Baptist, I was raised this way, I was raised. That doesn't seem much, but it's instilled in us. It's a part of us. It's who we become, whether we like it or not. And there's an old saying that people said that, you know, if you can put a child in the Catholic system and raise them for seven years, that they will not turn away from it. And very rarely do you see that. And that's from the, you know, from them themselves. But very rarely do you see something changing. So how can I change, right? How can I go? And why would you? Well, you would because your eternal is at stake. You want to change because your eternal salvation, your eternal life, this life really doesn't mean that much. We want to say, we want to believe, we want to hope, and we do want to have fun. And I believe that Yahweh wants us to have fun. I believe Yeshua had fun. I'm sure he had some laughs. I'm sure he had some times. But the ending, how it ended, how the apostles ended, how many people who come before us ended in what the world would say, terrible, right? But it ended abruptly. 
Let's go on. A time to be born and a time to die. We know if we don't live perfectly, that there's a time, there's a pointed day in, in scriptures that says there's a time for us to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. Now, this is very interesting. It says there's a time to plant and a time to uproot. So why would you uproot something? Why would you pull something out? Why would you do something like that? Well, obviously, if you planted the wrong seed, if you did the wrong thing, you want to uproot it. You don't want that terrible root to grow. You don't want it to be something. It sounds horrific to most people, but that root causes problems. That evil causes problems. And if you turn on the news, however much you believe it, but we know people do get shot, stabbed, right? These things happen. Let's go on. To everything there is a season and time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. Right? So we know the time for everything. It tells us this. It's a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal. There's a time that that's all we can do is heal. There's nothing else. There's people I know right now that that's their only thing they can do, basically. They can't get out of bed. They can't get up. They can't brush their teeth. They can't do the things that they normally, every day, we do. They can't, and most people don't want to be around you at those times, right? How many friends want to be a friend of somebody like that? Because you know if you're going to see them, you're helping them, right? How many worldly people want to do anything like that? A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build. We know that, right? There, there's things that has to be torn down. There's ways that we have learned that has to be destroyed. There's things that we have to just tear up, uproot, and go back to. And the thing that I would say, it's time to erase the board, right? Sometimes it's time to just erase that board and say, look, this board, it, the trigonometry on this board went too far the other way. This board needs to be taken care of. This board needs to have some redos, right? Two plus two, I don't know if it's really four anymore. Let's go at it again and let's make sure. And that might sound crazy, but biblically, scripturally, our ways, our foundation should be Yahweh, Yeshua. But anything other than that, if we're not careful, we can be persuaded into calendars. We can be persuaded into so many things, right? So we won't get too far and too deep into it because there's a lot, a lot, a lot that we can go in different directions. But there's a time for all of us to learn. And that could be every day. Every day we should pray, right? Our Father who art in heaven, he tells us how to pray. He don't tell us to pray to anybody or to Mary or to this one or that one or, or to mommy and daddy or sister, or uncle, brother, any of that. He says, our father, and who said this? Yeshua, right? The one called Jesus, true name Yeshua, said, when you pray, you pray like this. Our father, the father, the one who sent him, right? Anyway, let's go on. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build. We even see that Moshe killed someone, right? Now, there's varying stories on that in different ways. But if you've seen your people being whipped and beat on and murdered, you know, when, when this was happening, it, just like any other atrocity, you could kill a slave and who cares? right? Well, he was a bad slave. He didn't listen. It's kind of like the chain gang, if you will, out in prisoners. He tried to run, so I shot him. Is anybody going to take that to court? Is anybody going to say, you know, it, it, even if it didn't happen, are the prisoners going to say, oh, he didn't do that? Maybe down the road, maybe years later, but more than likely what's going to happen is everybody's going to say, well, whatever, as long as you don't shoot me. Point of the matter is, Time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build. If you are part of something and you see atrocities, 
usually we want to help. You don't join evil for evil, but you, you know, do what you can. And we don't know in that situation, he might have been choking him out. He could have been killing him. He could have been, you know, we don't know what that would have led to. So we have to be careful in what we put on to other things and how far we make it our own story. I used to have a friend in the army said, that's your story. Tell it any way you want to, right? Ain't that right? Ain't that right? Oh, that's your story. Instead of agreeing, right? Because you have to be careful in agreeing because you might be a part of a lie as well. Let's go. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. There's nothing wrong with being happy. That's one thing that just is horrific, I think, across the board with religion. A lot of religion is head down, eyes closed, reverent, but only in the building. After the building, do anything you want. But is that the way it should be? If somebody come in there and they was healed, shouldn't we be happy? If somebody gets out of the bed for Lazarus to arise, you think they was mourning, had head downs? They was probably happy. They was probably really happy. They was happy, right? But there is a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. This is life. It's what it's made up of. It's what we have to go through. But through each part of this shows us who we are. And it gives us a chance to realize the weeping is for what? Is it for nonsense? Some people cry over the bicycle going flat. Some people will cry over this. Some people cry over nonsense or things in a way. Weeping is for others as well. People in the hospital, people that are sick, people that are not right, people that need to be right. Right? That that's the things that we see in scriptures you're weeping for. Not because you're Adidas shoes are not tied right, because you got a scuff on them, because you're, you know, your Nikes, because you're whatever. Right? Your Ferrari got scratched, your your yacht has a nick on it, you know, it didn't it hit the buoy. All these things that if we're not careful, we can run into that worldly stuff where we don't care about people. We care about me, right? Me and my family. But we see all through scriptures that he put himself last. His disciples, if they was doing it right, put themselves last. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to re rain from embracing. I think if you've been anywhere and done anything, you embrace at the house, you do things at your home, you do all this, but in public and other places, you don't do things like that, right? Because it's just not acceptable. And you don't want people thinking of you and your loved ones and thinking evil things or evil thoughts. A time to search out and a time to count is lost. A time to keep and a time to discard. Again, a time to search out and a time to count loss. If it's a calendar question, if it's a whatever question, right? Salvation shouldn't be too much of a question. That's pretty much what we see is what you get. But with that being said, I believe salvation ain't a one and done. Salvation is not till the end of your life. You, how can you be saved unless Yahweh himself comes down and says you are saved? Unless he tells you, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, please don't make this a religion because people take things like that and run with it. That is only, according to scripture, when you die. To be absent of the body is to be present with Yahweh, the creator, right? So with that being said, the only time that's going to happen is when you die. So we have to be careful with this one and done salvation issue, because if you're truly saved in whatever religion, see, that's a lot of things too. People think they were saved when they was five or six or 10 or 12, or they, they think they obtained salvation. But if that's true, then what's the rest of your life for? If that's really a true statement, if you can be saved 
at whatever spot in your life, then what's the rest of this for? You see what I'm saying? If you plant your plants and you, you bring your plants and you start planting your plants, if you only plant one plant, your salvation plant, when you're six, it's not going to last the rest of your life. More than likely, it's not going to last six months, a year, two years, a few years. So the reaping on sowing process kind of shows us that's not a true way to look at life. That's not a true way that we should look at it. I know there's a lot of religions that look at it that way. I know there's a lot of people that think that. I know that's preached a lot from podiums and platforms and all that, that then why would you go to church? What's the point of a church? What's the point of going and sitting on a pew if you're saved? See, that makes no sense, does it really? And I'm not trying to say don't go there, don't go no more, but it says forsake not to assemble yourselves together. All the scriptures say this for a reason because our life is a journey. It's not a quick hundred yard dash. We hand the baton to somebody else and we're saved and that's that. It's a marathon from the time you're born until the time you die and everything in between. And I mean everything. Search the scriptures and see if this isn't true. Every idle word that you say is going to be in judgment. Every idle word. That's serious stuff. So think about that. How can one be saved if they say they were saved when they were six in whatever church, whatever religion, whatever dominion, and then their mouth has spewed death for 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years? Are they saved? Is that going to be a salvation issue? And we're not going to go deep into that. We're, I don't want it to be any more than what it said. But... If you're judged for every idle word, if you're judged for the actions, if you're judged for the works, then that's that's a different story, right? The thing that we've been handed down is what I'm trying to submit to you is a lot of it is not really what the Bible says. A lot of this salvation issue and, and Acts 2.38 or John 1.1, 3.16, whatever you want to believe in, is not a one and done salvation thing. We see that. We see it clearly. The rich man, the poor man Lazarus. We see so many times, you know, of what happened and what's going on. And we see so many times. So the point of this is there's a time for everything in life. There's a time to heal. There's a time to be sick. Why? Because that's just a learning process sometimes. It's something we have to do to understand others are sick. And if we get haughty and if we get to be so on top of the world and we're untouchable and we can't be sick, if we're not careful, we forget how it is to be sick. We forget how it is to be a part of that. We forget, and I would warn you to be very careful of these issues and these things because what I have found, and again, I'll just tell you my story, what I have found, when you worry about other people more than your family, when you worry about others more than you, you put yourself last, he blesses that. And that's another plant that might take a year or two or ten to grow. But when you put yourself last and put others first, right? Say you're on your way to Centrea and you want to go to Centrea. You want to go to the town that's near you. It's five, ten, seven miles away. And you have a purpose. And somebody's in the road screaming and whining and saying, they need a ride. Please give me a ride. Please give me a ride. Do you drive by them or do you give the excuse of every reason in the book? Why? Yes, your family's there waiting on you. Yes, you have a purpose. Yes, you have things to do. But will you stop all that and help someone? And I'm not saying to help everybody, but the scripture says if someone asks you to go a mile, to go with them twine, right? Now, we have to be careful. We have to be wise in our decisions. But what I'm saying, a lot of times what I've found when we put ourselves last, then we become blessed. Then our family members come back in the right way instead of this way and that way, right? So there's a lot of 
There's a lot of scripture, a lot of reading. There's a lot to healing. A lot of times we think healing is just, I say a prayer and it's done. I have the faith. But we see, sometimes it took time. The woman with the issue of blood took her 12 years, 12 years, and she finally got a hold of Yeshua and these, right? To most people, this is nonsense, to be honest. To most people seeing you wear this kind of stuff, you don't need to wear that. You don't have to wear that. You don't, but think about it. If Yeshua wouldn't have been wearing this, would she have been healed? What would she have grabbed? What studies? What did she pray? What did she have in her mind to know there's healings in his wings? There's healing in these. So just like this and many other things, there's more to something than meets the eye. There's more than just a simple verse. There's more than just a simple thing. And even when we just don't want to understand what we're going through and we just want it to be healed and done, there's a lesson to learn, right? So there's times to heal. There's times for our, everything we just went over. But we have to realize what part that we are in. And is it a sin or is it just life? Or do we even know? A lot of times we see people come and say, oh, well, just like Job, right? Just like this, just like that. And then the other people saying, because you sinned, because you did wrong, because you did this, because you did that. Was it that? Was it generational? Hey, while you're going through it, that's the time to pray. That's the time to figure it out. That's the time to talk with the creator and find out. Is it or is it not? Either way, we get a hold of those seat seats, if you will. We get a hold of the creator and we pray and we talk and we fast and we get a hold of others. Why do we not forsake to assemble ourselves together? Because those are the people that are hopefully doing the right things. Those are the people that are searching out Yahweh. Those are the ones that know and pray and say, Father, this one needs help. This one needs help. Oh, why? Because if you'll read the scriptures, it says some people's prayer is even an abomination to him. That's very important when you're sick. That's very important when you need a touch. Because if your prayer is an abomination, it ain't going nowhere, right? Your prayer and you're praying and you're praying and, and he don't answer you because it's an abomination. Everything you did in your life is an abomination and he's not going to answer that's a thanking point, isn't it? So that's why you want to call upon the elders and those who know him. So until next time, may Yahweh bless you. May his continent shine upon you and may he grant you shalom. Shalom and Yahweh bless you. Pray and get a hold of the creator Yahweh. And if you have any questions, comments, let us know. And we will pray for you as well. We love to see people healed, touched, and blessed. Until next time, Yahweh's love bless you all. Shalom and Shalom.